Hello, dear friends, and welcome to IVMED webinar. That is the series of educational webinars held by fertility specialists of Medical Center IVMED and IVMED family IVF and surrogacy agency. I want to remind you that we are located in Kyiv in Ukraine. My name is Nadia Milinevska. I'm a head of International Department for Customer Servicing at Medical Center IVMED and I am a director of uh, IVMED Family Agency. We have a topic for today, egg donation, egg cell cryopreservation and treatment options at Medical Center IVMED. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, to you our speakers. The first speaker um, is uh, Birol Aydin. He is um, director of IVF laboratory at Medical Center IVMED. He is a senior embryologist, official expert of Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology at Medical Center IVMED. And the second speaker is Galina Strelko. She is a medical doctor. She is obstetrician and gynecologist, fertility specialist, head doctor and co-founder of Medical Center IVMED. Which topics, uh, which issues we will discuss today? We will discuss how to choose a donor, to which medical and legal criteria should correspond an egg donor to participate uh, in IVF program, the option of pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos in egg donation programs. Is it necessary to use only fresh oocytes in IVF program? Which advanced laboratory technologies of oocytes cryopreservation are available at Medical Center IVMED? and how the IVF programs with frozen egg cells can save your budget and bring you the, the desirable result in getting pregnant. So let's start, Birol, please, you can yeah. begin. Sure. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Birol Leiden. I am IVF Laboratory Director of IVMED Clinic. So today we will try to talk about egg donation and donor egg cryopreservation how we are creating a cryo egg bank, how we are using that uh, actively for our uh, patients, uh, which uh, program give much more benefit for you. Uh, we will discuss as financially, as theoretically, also practically, which will help you much more. Uh, of course, when we talk about oocyte donation, first we should know uh, there are two kinds of oocyte donation program. First, uh, as you prefer, you can use fresh donor, and second one, uh, cryo egg bank is frozen donor all site. If we talk about fresh donor cycle, so there is a, some kind of algorithm for all site donation. So first, we uh, need a recipient evaluation. So we need to know about recipient uh, with our IVF specialist. Uh, we need to monitorize them, uh, make a blood test as radial levels. So, and then second stage, of course, uh, we have special donor agency uh, as IVMED. So we have donor recruitment, donor screening. Uh, we have special uh, consent form each for recipient and donor. So both sides get a kind of safety and security. Also, of course, important, we need to synchronize if we are using fresh cycle, donor and recipient. So we have uh, through our IVF specialist, prescription of hormonal therapy, uh, of course, ovarian stimulation of the donor, uh, ovarian uh, oocyte retrieval, ovum pickup of donors, uh, of course, fertilization of the oocyte, plan of embryo transfer, and of course, maintenance of the pregnancy by our IVF specialist. So who require egg donation? Of course, uh, egg donation program uh, needs special criteria, uh, which patient can choose, uh, such program, of course, who have lost their egg cells after the special chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or some oncological reason. Uh, another who has early menopause station, uh, of course, with high factor of uh, genetic disorders in their family or their previous baby, um, who has some surgical process and it's interrupt uh, ovarian reserve, uh, who has main cycle and they receive already abnormal morphological eggs 
uh, if patient have burn but already has uh, unfunctioning ovaries and who has a many trial but no receive X, that means low ovarian reserve or no reserve at all. And of course, with many unsuccessful IVF trials who didn't achieve any kind of pregnancy. So first important things, how we are following up our egg donors uh, as laboratory, embryology laboratory. Of course, we have agency, we have uh, team for the recruitment, we have team for the uh, medical side of analyzing of the donor, but what we are doing in embryology lab when we have already in our hand a recipient a donor. Of course, we have different kind of software management system which we are controlling through embryology lab uh, between donor and recipient relation. Of course, we have Dr. Alex, our medical software, which we are following up all direction from our medical doctors and our reception. So if we have requests, so we can see daily on the daily program, weekly program, when we have a donor, when we have recipient, if we have frozen cycle, when we need to talk. So this uh, connected to our uh, CRM database and also our uh, egg donor website, online website, which you are choosing and uh, which you get online your egg donor. So between these three software, uh, we can, able to get all information about donor and recipient in embryology laboratory and we can prepare all culture media protocols, uh, lab SOPs according to this direction. Also, of course, we are supporting all of this system with special witnessing system to protect a biological security of your material as a recipient and donor egg material. Of course, also CRM giving kind of chance to our uh, agencies and our team to control egg donors according to their medical treatment, their injection time, and other specific things. So if we look at the egg donation from IVF laboratory perspective, uh, what we need to know exactly, what we are analyzing as embryologists. We analyze medical history of recipient, uh, egg donor medical history, if this egg donor have previous cycle, how was the egg quality, what kind of blastosis outcome and pregnancy we got this egg donor. Also from recipient side, how is the sperm factors, male factors, what kind of advanced technique we need to use to achieve a much faster and uh, good pregnancy, biological safety of the egg donor of recipient, we need to use some special advanced technology to protect their biological safety. Uh, donor egg quality determination, I will talk in next slides. We have very strict criteria about uh, donor eggs which we are choosing for egg donor program. Uh, possible advanced, uh, advanced techniques for the fertilization and embryo development process. So we are using different kinds of culture media. We are using time-lapse technology. Uh, also, another advanced technology, which I will talk in next slides. Also, of course, safety and quality management of the cryo donor eggs. So, of course, first we need to know about uh, structure of a mature oocyte. So, as a mature oocyte, quality of mature oocyte as zona pellucida, which is protecting inner DNA material from uh, environmental factors. I mean, which will give damage to oocyte, which will protect nuclear area, cytoplasm, which will feed by the energy to uh, nucleus, uh, and nucleus which will keep all DNA material. So this is the basically a high quality of mature eggs, which we have to take care of the quality when we freeze or when we use for donor egg programs. So as you see the uh, slide about woman age for the reproductive performance. So while woman age is increasing, of course, reproductive performance is decreasing. So this is general conception, natural conception of uh, IVF. What about egg donors? Of course, egg donors also have similar situation. When we see the, uh, this article, so while donor egg age increasing, of course, life birth rate and high quality of 
uh, blastocyst rate also decreasing. So while a donor age under 35, so almost we have higher life birth rate. So egg donation logistic advantage, if we compare with, between fresh egg donor and cryobanking, as fresh advantage, of course, no freezing, that means no risk, uh, depends of which laboratory or which clinic you are working on. It. Because every embryologist and every laboratory doesn't have a big experience for egg banking or vitrification of all sites. If we look from all site banking, like in cryo egg banking, of course, advantages a lot. First is no synchronization donor or recipient. You can use any time the your eggs donor eggs. Of course, it's the safety of the recipient. And another important factor, no uh, number of embryos that 10, 12, or 15, which you don't need to use. Of course, you can use a different number of cryo donor egg, which you need. Uh, if we check about uh, Spanish experience, uh, while we see between fresh egg and cryo egg on the donors, there is almost no difference for the survival rate of the egg bank, which we told all side, almost 92% egg are survived, high quality of egg and we don't see any kind of difference on the clinical pregnancy rate, almost the same. Even uh, cryo egg bank supply higher pregnancy, live birth rate than uh, fresh egg. So uh, also if we check about quality of embryos, again, the same situation, there is no difference, significant difference between cryo egg and fresh donor eggs. Also, if you look about ongoing pregnancy, so almost even egg bank has better pregnancy rate than fresh, but it's not a significant thing. So while another diagram is showing, okay, between fresh, uh, between natural IVF conception and egg donor conception, there are difference for the age, for the probability of live birth rate. You see for the red line, this is the natural IVF conception. After 35 years old, it is dramatically decreased. But in the donor egg, if you are a recipient, even with uh, higher age, still you have big probability of live birth rate with the donor eggs. So here is the main question. Will I have uh, IVF success with donor eggs? Of course, you are affording to financially, you have a big hope. And this is the main question what we need to give answer. So for that, what we are doing in IVMED clinic, of course, there are many different kinds of eggs from the donor, which we supply after the stimulation, after the egg pickup. Of course, we have a big criteria, selection criteria, which egg we will freeze uh, for egg banking. We are checking the perivitellin space, which will allow calcium and other uh, metabolic activation between uh, wall and oocyte membrane. Zona pellucida, which is protecting polar bodies, which is uh, determining the maturity of all sites. Cytoplasmic inclusion, which is helping uh, between uh, genetic material and uh, energy activity. And of course, cumulus complex, which is protecting all sites to outside factors. So there are a lot of different kinds of research for the fresh donor egg or cryo egg they start, try to compare. So if we check this, so if you look about survival rate, almost very high between vitrified and fertilization rate, almost similar. So uh, also embryo transfer rate, almost similar. And if you check implantation rate, 25% to 24% is totally same. And live birth rate, even vitrified oocyte has higher live birth rate than fresh oocyte. Of course, this is because of uh, timing. So we have enough time to prepare uh, endometrium as well. When patients have a more time for endometrium preparation, we have chance to make advanced techniques. Uh, PRP is uh, one of the techniques, so we can develop endometrium well. So that means our uh, oocyte or our embryo is already frozen and we have time for that. 
So if we check the video, I want to show you basically how uh, we are vitrifying egg. So because mostly uh, when we say vitrifying oocyte, uh, most the patient a little afraid. So they have question if my donor eggs will become growing better. If we saw this is under high percentage of equilibration media with high concentration of media, we are trying to uh, make uh, exact concentration inside of cytoplasm to protect our genetic material inside of donor eggs. So when we try to use such vitrification technology, this is high security technology and faster technology for the all-site vitrification. And this is almost as best survival rate. There is no uh, chance to get any kind of risk during towing can vitrification if embryologist has special experience. We are using special embryo tested uh, freezing uh, carrier to protect our eggs during storage. Uh, if you look another uh, technology which we are choosing uh, also uh, frozen egg or from the donor, this is spindle weave technology. This is a uh, rare technology which are using the, by the clinics. So spindle weave technology is using is showing us exactly the place of spindle. Spindle is very important because spindle carry up all chromosomal activities and still 20% of eggs after uh, pickup, we don't have chance to determine spindle or if we make the fertilization, we have chance to give damage to spindle. So in this case, of course, this all site either will not survive, either will not give high quality of embryos. So what is the benefits of spindle weave technology for the cryo all site or egg? So for the ICSI, of course, if we use the spindle technology system, spindle weave system, we totally eliminate to give damage during fertilization, during injection to all site. Of course, egg freezing, if we determine it after the function spindle place, so that is a uh, huge advantage. That means this all site after the towing will survive for sure and also will give high quality of blastocyst. And of course, also we have possibility with spindle wheel technology, we can measure zona pellucida and zona pellucida will give us big advantage. This egg is exactly good dimension or not. So if we look the video, how we are determining spindle and how we do by the spindle wheel technology fertilization. So with this technology, we already, as you see on the uh, seven o'clock position already has the white color of spindle. So while we do ICSI by this way, and needle and spindle is totally different location, so that, that will not be have chance to give any damage to spindle. So DNA material we will protect by this way. Spindle can be at different places always. Sometimes can be on the three o'clock position where we are doing injection. Sometimes can be under the only polar body at 12 o'clock position. So place of spindle is changeable. That's why this technology will give big advantage for the survival rate and for high quality of embryo. Uh, there are several research about meiotic spindle. Uh, so size of meiotic spindle also is important. And we are also considering when we choose uh, our donor eggs, which we will freeze. So as you see there, while size of spindle is ideal, so that means fertilization rate is much higher, degeneration rate is much lower, and good quality of blastocyst rate is much higher. Of course, also spindle size affect pregnancy. So ideal spindle size, as you see on the middle, almost have double a pregnancy rate than others. So spindle size is the much one of the main determination factor for the egg quality or uh, embryo quality. So who will benefit from, from spindle weave technology? Of course, who has advanced maternal age, low antimalarian hormone, uh, previous poor IVF embryos with normal male factors, uh, poor looking oocyte in previous IVF, 
previous poor fertilization with uh, ICSID, assessment of oocyte optimization therapy, frozen end of oocyte assessment, and high quality of cryo donor oocyte. So how we are doing cryo donor egg transportation? Of course, also we have many requests as uh, IV met. So we have an egg bank and so different location in the different country can uh, try. Also patient can re request uh, donor eggs, which country has legal issue for egg donation. So we are able to transport our donor eggs also to different countries for our patient use. So how we are doing that, we have, of, of course, special uh, transport guidelines. We are using special dry shippers, which is keeping with uh, exact temperature and condition uh, donor eggs. So uh, with the new technology, we can also follow up with the GPS system, where is the uh, dry shipper, where is the courier, and the time uh, lapse, we can see the temperature, we can see the nitrogen level, uh, and we can keep safety during transportation. So uh, there are kind of research, uh, they checked uh, st storage risk during the donor egg transport, and uh, they finally find out, okay, main, uh, main things about uh, storage uh, and transportation is the quality management. So while quality, quality management is very important, we have to uh, use uh, special guidelines for that, special material for the cryo storage, dry shipper, and material which we are transporting to another country. Uh, as cryo banking, where we are keeping our donor eggs, also this is important, we are using special uh, autom automation and also special uh, dry shipper and container, which has already data logger. This data logger is already connected to our main computer and also connected to uh, our cell phones. So with special application, we can follow up our cryo storage anywhere else. Also, we are using time control system. So with uh, special uh, identified chip and labeling, we can see the exactly place of uh, egg donor. We don't need to take many different material outside and try to choose. We know exactly where is the place as automatically. So uh, how is working? Cryo tank control. We have special RFID chip in each cryo device. With this RFID chip, when we read with card reader, we can see the all information about donor and recipient automatically by the software. So we can determine the place of the uh, egg donor and we take without any risk this cryo device. So as you see here, the diagram of the cryo map, so which you see with the yellow, that means that cryo donor still didn't use, which you see with red, that's already used. So this is automatically is going this information to our uh, donor database, online donor database, and you are able to see which donor is available or which donor is not available. So what is our transportation process? Uh, if you buy uh, donor X, cryo donor X from IVMED. Of course, we always transport uh, frozen donor X, embryos or sperm in a highly uh, specialized container. We always ensure that one egg minus one, 196 Celsius should be transportation process. Uh, we use special cryo materials. That's why uh, we have special permission and documentation. So uh, your biological material or cryo donor eggs will never pass through X-rays. We use only dry, sh dry shipping containers which has a uh, special proof from International Air Transport Association. Also, we can follow dry shipper by the GPS system and our dry shipper can keep uh, donor egg, cryo donor egg under high quality at least two weeks. So uh, one of the important question, what I should do if my budget is limited for egg donation? 
Of course, that's a big question because everyone cannot organize exactly budget of full donors. And in this case, of course, frozen donor X is helping cryobanking. By the cryobank system, you can buy uh, how many X you want and you can pay less amount. So this is the one of the big advantage for the uh, egg donor programs in IVMED. So we have different package for different budgets. So if we come to, about our result, about our outcomes for egg donation process. So if you look about 2018, so our egg donor average was 29 years old. So almost fertilization rate is 96%, really high. Uh, if we check the uh, blastocyte rate up to 60%, 62%. So it is almost giving high chance for the pregnancy. If we look 2019, egg donor average is, age average is 28, fertilization rate 993, and grail rate of blastocyte stage 74%, it is really high. So Number of donor we done 300 at eight, and number of donor oocyte we already used for the programs 5,424. So if you look at the, the, the diagram, the different uh, statistics, so almost 74 percent of general blastocyst rate for the donor X programs. Doesn't matter which age is the recipient and male factor, any male factor included. Uh, fertilization rate, almost 93%, and grade one embryo rate, almost 70%. So also, if we compare these results between uh, USA Fertility Statistic Agency and UK Agency, so we can see uh, we have better outcome for the fertilization rate and also prayer preservation rate if we check the freezing and towing statistic, because this was the big question for the survival rate, as we see in IVMED, we froze uh, 3,456 oocyte, we tow almost 1,986 oocyte, and survived almost 1,969. So almost 99% of oocyte survival rate we have. So why we are different as IVMED clinic for egg donation program. We use fully technology for donor egg banking. So for egg choosing, freezing, storage and transportation, we follow special criteria. We use only elective donor egg freezing. So donor, one donor, if we want to use for cryobank, should pass many different criteria from the egg pickup till freezing. We use high security witness system for donor egg following from egg pickup to embryo transfer. Why this is important? Because you will be totally, you will feel totally safety as recipient during your embryo transfer, also during your embryos prepared by donor eggs. Only well experienced senior embryologists freeze egg donor uh, for the egg bank who has up to 10 years of experience as I said, embryo freezing and oocyte freezing is not the same. Oocyte freezing is much more sensitive and need, needs huge experience. So what we are doing uh, during uh, COVID-19 pandemic, how we are protecting uh, our uh, cryo storage, our uh, cryobank. Of course, we are following special guidelines of uh, European Society of Human Reproduction and American Society of Human uh, Reproductive Medicine. So uh, according to their guidelines, we are trying to use uh, special disinfectant, which is tested for uh, biological material, which we know there is no damage. All kind of material which is entering the laboratory, sterilizing by UV and special uh, disinfectant, and also limited uh, embryologists of working in the lab with special security condition. So thank you very much for your time and for your attention. So after answer and question, we will discuss about your questions. Thank you very much, Pirol, uh, yeah. for your interesting presentation. 
Um, I want to remind you that we have uh, active chat. Uh, you can ask your questions in it. And um, in a few uh, seconds, uh, the next speaker will proceed with presentation. Um, uh, but all you can stop your uh, yeah. presentation. And um, I would like to uh, also remind you that we have a big choice of um, different egg donation programs. Uh, we will um, dedicate um, one of the next webinars uh, to um, just to tell you about all these programs which are available now that IV met. We will tell you about the differences, the different options, the different budgets, and um, we hope that will be interesting for you. And now we will um, give the floor to Dr. Galina. Uh, you can start, please. Thank you very much. Hello. I am really happy to be present and to give you some information about egg donation. Now I will try to switch on my screen. So, now we will talk about egg donation. Uh, we will hopefully explain very well all technical parts of this program. And my task will be to explain how it is organized, how we found our egg donors, uh, where and how we investigate them, and uh, what about the results. So, we will start about uh, discussion. Is it really interested for our patient to do the egg donation? How often? patients interested in this program, uh, who are our egg donors, uh, then I will give information about the official requests of Ukrainian Ministry of Health about examination of egg donors, um, also we will talk about results of our egg donation program and about other important things. So, European Association of Reproductive Medicine published information that um, around 7.7% of all ARC cycles are egg donation cycles. This is information published in 2017. Uh, actually, proportion will be more or less the same, maybe 8%. Uh, numbers maybe will be more important. Important is that around 50% uh, of all treatments uh, of egg donation uh, have done in Spain, because in Spain legislation is very flexible for egg donation, but uh, as request is so important, uh, in Spain it is quite difficult to realize uh, this request. That's why Ukraine became more and more popular as a country where you can do a donation by very professional and by very safety way. Uh, so this is the slide of Ukrainian National Register. Uh, published uh, this year, but information collected about 2018. And we can see that this register uh, exists since uh, 1999, so more than uh, 10 years, and uh, sorry, 20 years, and um, we can see that we have constant increase of general number of cycle. Uh, we have dramatically increased this rows called the number of cryopreserved embryo transfer. Uh, this uh, shows that it is absolutely safe and absolutely effective technique. And also we can see that we have a quite important percentage of egg donation cycle in our country. So European community show around 7.7% and in Ukraine it is proportion is 8.3%. Uh, so it is more or less the same, but even a little bit more than in Europe. Uh, 
In our clinic, we also have constant increase of general number of ART cycles and of egg donation cycles as well. In 2019, we have done around uh, 300 and something, 300 people, 309 egg collections for egg donors and um, around one third of all our IRT program were egg donation program. So, how it is organized our uh, egg donation programs? We have very beautiful, very nice international department. And uh, this department divides in three parts. So, unit of regulation, of organization, or and contacts with international patients. Uh, our international department um, always uh, take into consideration the Ministry of Health order number 787. We describe the order how to choose, how to investigate egg donors, who can be egg donors, and how to proceed this procedure. So, the main requirement is should the woman age between 18 and 36. In our clinic, uh, we mostly um, require before 32 years old. According to the Ministry of Health order, we can, uh, women before 36 can participate in this program. Uh, the uh, second important thing is uh, women who would like to be a donor uh, should have as minimum one healthy baby. Uh, it is a very good condition because uh, all our donors have proven fertility. If they were able to have a healthy baby, it means that they are healthy and they have good fertility. Uh, absence of negative phenotypic manifestation, it means no some hereditary problems, some disease. Uh, she should have um, some normal good health. Uh, has no general contraindication to participate in a donation program, program like some disease like coagulopatia, like uh, infections, um, and uh, absence of negative habits like drug consumption, alcohol consumption, and other substance abuse. And this uh, we always control with some specific tests and uh, each visit. Each control, each uh, monitoring, we control uh, with this test that uh, our donor doesn't uh, use um, substances. So, according to our Ministry of Health order, we should do a lot of different examination. I will not read all this uh, examination, but it is the same request as. Uh, and even more than requested in um, Western country, like uh, Spain, for example, or like United States. We are doing all uh, general infection tests, like HIV, hepatitis, syphilis. Uh, also, we are doing a lot of infections like chlamydia, plasma, herpes, etc. And we are doing a lot of general analysis, which can um, help us to understand that this egg donation will be safe for our egg donor, and we will not have uh, some complications with uh, the health of egg donor. And also, normally, we are doing uh, some genetic tests, obligatory discardotype, also, diagnostic of cystic fibrosis, uh, Martin Bell syndrome, Fragile X, spinal muscular atrophy, uh, also um, hereditary deafness, phenylketonuria. Why these mutations? Because uh, we have studied the most spread uh, and most often mutations in our population. In the Ukrainian population. And we uh, have chosen these mutations as most often. 
Uh, if patients have some specific requests, of course, we can do uh, some specific analysis for them. Uh, we are doing some kind of um, storage of genetic material of our abdomen. And even in one year, in two years, in three years, if uh, patients will ask us to do some additional tests, for example, because some health problem of children or, or some question of the pediatric um, of these patients, we can do these additional tests because we have uh, genetic material stored in our clinic. So some of the literary documents uh, which our donors donor should provide is uh, official passport, a fiscal code, a birth certificate for children, uh, also may feel a lot of official uh, consents uh, decreed by the Ministry of Health. Um, also, they provide us report by psychiatrists, like uh, also by an ecologist, that they have no role, general practitioner, and uh, some additional tests. One of the main uh, moment, main uh, analysis which we take in consideration it is the level of anti hormone. There are a lot of scientific uh, publications about the IMH level and the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. Normal hyperstimulation when we receive more than follicles. So, this is the point uh, which we are searching in our donors because uh, we should receive more eggs, not one or two, but a good number, to have a good choice and to provide to our patients uh, the guarantee to have genetically normal embryos. Uh, so, uh, the, our criterion to choose our egg is to have anti-malarian hormone more than 3.5. This is the level uh, from which most of author and most of scientific publications say that it will be very good responder and even may have ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, but only in case on some specific protocol of simulation. In our clinic, we use protocols of stimulation and triggering of final oocyte maturation, which exclude ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, but we receive always a good number of eggs from our donor. So, how we select our donors? First, there are some advertisement and some marketing. And we have calls of donors, contacts, and our call center speaking with them and doing the first uh, selection. After that, we invite our egg donors to interview. And uh, if they pass this interview, they are invited to first visit to our clinic. So, uh, doctor should do the first examination. Uh, after that, psychological consultation will be done, and we take blood for some infections. After that, part of the include from the further uh, program, and some of them include. And then we are doing some specific tests, like genetic tests, like another infections, and um, further investigation. So. Our uh, selection is quite strict, and you can see that, that uh, only 3.3% from uh, potential candidate to a donor who called to clinic to ask and to uh, discuss the possibility to be a donor became finally our egg donor. At the present, we have uh, 215 active egg donors. It not signify that our database only 200. It means that some of them actually cannot stimulate, uh, made stimulation. Some of them decide to stop. Some of them take pause. Uh, some of them have done three, four stimulation and decide to not uh, continue. So 
from uh, all our database. Actually, we have 215 uh, uh, egg donor who are ready to uh, work with us. Every month, we receive around 300 calls from candidate to be egg donor. We accept after the first selection around 20 candidates for the first visit. And um, in 2019, we had around 254 candidates. And after all examination and uh, selection, only 119 became adults. So you can see from this slide that our method of selection uh, and investigation are quite strict. So, who they are, our egg donor? Uh, around 20% has university degree. Mm, secondary specialized education is like college, is around 50%. Secondary education also around 20%. Uh, the level, the percentage of uh, our egg donors' high education is a little bit less than in general population but maybe because of young age and because they are living in an area with uh, less success for education maybe. Most of them are working 91% and the uh, average number of children that they have is 1.5. Uh, less than 1% of them are found to be positive for hepatitis, uh, syphilis, etc., for serious infections, and such women, of course, were excluded from the further program. Uh, some sexual transmitted disease, sometimes uh, on microplasma, plasma, but nothing sexual, and uh, some of them we can treat and then control, and some of them are excluded. Uh, sometimes we found leomyoma or ovarian cyst, dysplasia, all this uh, disease uh, we exclude from our from participation of our donation program. Genetic abnormality is not very often, 3.5%. Of course, all these girls are excluded uh, from a donation program. Of course, we inform them what it is to explain the situation, but we, we are not proposed them to continue. This is the result of the genetic and molecular genetic examination. So, spinal uh, muscular atrophy around 3%, fragile peaks around 1.2%, 1.4%, cystic fibrosis 2.7%. It is um, more or less uh, similar in general population, but uh, it is makes sense to, to do all this investigation and to exclude the people who are part of augmentation and they will not participate in a donation program. So the average age is around 28, 29 years old. Uh, girls have shown that uh, in it is a little bit different year by year, but in general, it is around 28, 29 years old. Most of our egg donors, 68%, is 26, 30 years old. The average on-site number 2019 is 17.6. Match is 16.6. Uh, fertilization rate is very good. Um, and in average, we are freezing around 11 or 12 blastocysts uh, our egg donation program. It is a very good number because um, the average uh, number of genetically normal avoid error is around 66%. So average number of employed blastocysts is 10.6. It is absolutely enough to receive to do doing two, three, four transfer and to receive for sure pregnancy. Uh, equal 
I will explain why, because the average pregnancy rate per cycle with NGS is around 73%. The average number of embryo transfer in the nation cycle we have calculated is around 1.4. It means that most patients prefer to transfer one embryo, but some of them prefer to have twins and ask us to transfer two. So, uh, to receive, uh, to have the fertility rate around 80 90%, like in natural life, yeah, uh, need to do around to embryo transfer, so we need around three, four employed embryo, and in the age we have seven, eight, so it is absolutely enough to, to have a good result our egg donation treatment. So what about avoid rate? We compare our uh, employed rate with published information from other country, and we can see that the average rate is of LOD in egg donation program is 65%. Some clinic published 42, some clinic published 80%. Discuss why it may be less or more and say that it may be hormonal simulation, maybe combatory condition. But as we are in average rate, we can say for sure that we have good hormonal simulation regime. Very good laboratory condition, uh, absolutely good embryo manipulation method, and uh, why um, we have not 100%, of course, with some of X genetic abnormality. Also, we should uh, mention that the age of the father uh, may be important. I will explain why. Uh, yeah, this is that I have told that NGS in our coding gives 66% of genetically normal embryo and only 2% without diagnosis or mosaic. So, age of father. Um, uh, there is some examination named DNA fragmentation of sperm, and it was where uh, the rate of unloading of embryo and age of father and this DNA fragmentation. And if we have young age of father, less than 39 years old, uh, we have quite a low level of this DNA fragmentation. Normal range is less than 30%. Yeah? And uh, an employee rate um, is around 50-60%. Yeah? But if we have advanced age of father, we can see that uh, DNA fermentation rate is around 40% and unemployment rate is quite important, much important. So we compare the situation in our clinic. Uh, the average age of men who have done DNA fermentation test is 35 years old. In egg donation program was a little bit more for 42.7 years. The difference is not so important, but we have found the frequency of increased DNA fermentation in in young men is around 24%. And in uh, in men uh, in egg donation program is around 39%. So much more often we found this problem. And if we detect the high level of DNA fermentation of a male partner, um, necessary to take into consideration that some simple things may improve the probability to have medically normal error and good quality um, sperm. So we should thinking about life style modification, like uh, um, normal healthy eating, like sport activity, physical activity, to not smoke or drink alcohol. Also necessary to control uh, infections because 35% of case of male infertility may be due to some infection problems. 
Um, and uh, most of the case uh, analogies are also antioxidant therapy like vitamin C, like vitamin E, like folic acid, um, also nerve cell. Uh, this is the function where uh, veins of um, scrotal part is uh, enlarged and it is increased the temperature in testes and produce uh, quite often the increase of the fermentation. And it was found in around 35% of patients with male infertility. And in some cases, the surgical treatment of this price cell may decrease the DNA fragmentation level and improve the parameters of sperm around. Sometimes, if we have very high level of DNA fragmentation, we can do the micromanipulation uh, retrieve of sperm from the testes. And in this case, we receive um, five times lower DNA fragmentation level than in the eucalyptus sperm. Also, we have some method to select sperm like sperm uh, sheep. There is a specific device which permits us to select the best sperm cells, best motility, and best motility, and without DNA fragmentation. Also, important question which some uh, patients ask us um, is the security of the donors. Of course, it is very important because, uh, according to our Ministry of Health Order, we should call our egg donors 30 days after egg collection. And if any questions, any problem happen, always uh, help donor to resolve this problem, to control all medical conditions. And it is our duty if we can say like that. Uh, according to our Ministry of Health uh, order, we cannot stimulate our egg donor more than eight times. Uh, we will call necessary examination and control uh, results of laboratory for each simulation. And uh, all controls are repeated every time before the new simulation. So, uh, I can say that the donation program in our clinic um, is really good organized because we select very well our potential donor. We are doing a uh, very, how to say, gentle but effective uh, controlled ovarian simulation with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Uh, preparation to embryo trans of our patients is individual, but it is the we cannot explain all concerning the preparation to embryo transfer in five minutes. It is very serious topic, and maybe one day we will do a new seminar dedicated to this topic. Uh, we have very good laboratory support to our controlled environment installation and IF programs. And that's why we have very good results of our donation program. So thank you for your kind attention, and I will be happy to answer all questions. Thank you very much. Um, we have questions, a lot of questions. <laughs> Excellent. It was a pleasure. <laughs> for uh, hello, dear doctor. I have done eight IVF with my own ex. I have one child now, and mm -hmm. one of them was ectopic, and one was um, preg uh, maybe one pregnancy with uh, pregnancy, four yeah. babies lost mm -hmm. uh, of them at 26 weeks. Um, two other I lost at six weeks and one at 11th week. Uh, and I sent to genetic, uh, genetic test uh, it has abnormality at chromosomes. 
I am 41 years and what is your recommendations for my next try uh, for IVF? Do you think donor X will be better for success this time? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for your question. It is really um, difficult situation. Um, the last pregnancies were genetically abnormal. Uh, and that's why they stop at six weeks, I think, because, um, okay, at 40 years old, around 80% of all embryo will have some genetic abnormalities. This is the statistic of uh, genetic testing. So, of course, if we will uh, use uh, egg donation program in your case, the probability to have pregnancy and to have normal pregnancy, healthy pregnancy is much higher. Uh, but from the other hand, it will be, how to say, a little bit different. Of course, we can try also use your own eggs, but in this case, it will be good to test your embryos, uh, to do NGS testing, next generation sequences testing, to see all your chromosomes, and to choose only embryos with normal genetic. Unfortunately, it may be that we can receive, for example, 10 eggs, eight embryos, five blastocysts, and even uh, no one will be healthy. This is the risk to working with all eggs after 38, 40 years old. Uh, so in your case, I think the probability to be pregnant and to have healthy baby of course, much higher if we will use egg donation program. Thank you. And uh, the next question to Birol. Mm -hmm. uh, is vitrified embryos, um, would you prefer to work with if you have a choice? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, that is the one of the question everyone uh, wondering. So for me, always I prefer uh, frozen embryo transfer, frozen embryo, because frozen embryo give two possibilities, two big possibilities. First possibility is from endometrium side. So we have enough time for the IVF specialist uh, to prepare endometrium well. So if she has, uh, if IVF specialist has some advanced therapy or something, so we'll have plenty of time for that. And second uh, important things, uh, of course, uh, frozen embryo, uh, specially selected for the criteria, special criteria. So that means frozen embryo and regular fresh embryo has a difference for the different selection criteria. When we have the fresh embryo, uh, exactly we don't uh, consider as morphologically 100%. Uh, so if morphologically looks well, so we transfer this embryo. But when we have frozen embryo and it's if such embryo back from the frozen as healthy towing, high quality of towing, that means this embryo has also high morphological capacity. So at least we already two times tested this embryo. Of course, this embryo has more potential than fresh embryo. Same things, uh, I have idea for the fresh oocyte and frozen oocyte. Thank you. And, uh... Um, from the same person question uh, to doctor, perhaps, uh, what are the most common infections uh, that you can see, maybe between egg donors? Uh, as I understand. Uh, okay, uh, if we are talking about egg donors, the most often we found mycoplasma infection. But Sorry, um, there is a detailization uh, in IF not donors, I have... Um, recipient, probably. IP. Recipient. The same. Fathers. Uh, in fathers. Okay. In fathers. Uh, we are doing the spermoculture. Uh, and the most often it is the general um, microorganism like um, Escherichia coli, like Enterobacter, so nothing special. In most of cases, we doesn't found some specific infections. We found, um, how to say, this bacteriosis. Uh, not uh, normal equilibrium uh, bacteria inside of organism. I mean that 
in most of case it is some disbalance and uh, antibiotic treatment may help for some period but after it may return this kind of infection so it is quite difficult to eradicate them but sometimes uh, antibacterial treatment can be helpful and we try to control as minimum the situation. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Mm, hi, I am, uh, am I understand correct? There are no difference in using fresh or frozen eggs, but I saw information uh, fresh eggs uh, have higher implantation rate, maybe to be all, mm -hmm. because okay. you told about that. <laughs> okay, of course, different clinics and different uh, organizations have different results. Of course, this is, as I said, wow. this depends on experience. Okay. Uh, career preservation of egg is not so easy like embryos. So if, if you have enough experience and enough advanced technology, you will have better outcomes. Basically, there is no difference, significant difference between fresh and frozen oocyte for the live birth, for the implantation as well. Uh, fresh, this is true, fresh oocyte, a little bit higher implantation rate. But for us, is the basic, like, basic result is the live birth. So life birth rate, if we check uh, all research, is proof that uh, frozen oocyte has better life birth, but again, I'm saying it's not significant. It's, we are talking about only two, three percent difference. Thank you. And um, thank you for a very informative presentation. Uh, for how long can oocytes be frozen? Does it affect fertilization? Okay, um, period of uh, cryo storage, uh, as different research shows, there is no effect. Uh, there is already a uh, published uh, article with the delivery of uh, 13 years of uh, embryos and frozen oocyte, which told uh, and became healthy pregnancy and life birth. So there is not a exactly a limited period, depends of how uh, laboratory or clinic storage, uh, how they make the quality management and safe the control of biological material. Thank you. Um, I have a question for embryologists, please. How do you freeze uh, oocytes during COVID-19? Are there special protocols during pandemic? As I explained on my presentation, okay, we are following for that uh, and SRM guidelines. So uh, we are trying to uh, avoid all risk factors during uh, cryopreservation. We are using only uh, high quality embryo tested material and material which we are uh, taking from the outside the laboratory, uh, disinfected by special tested disinfected and UV lights. So only uh, one person by the sterile condition is working for the career preservation in one room. Uh, there is no access of other staff or person in the dead room. So by this way, we avoid all kinds of cross-contamination. Um, maybe also to you question. I had such experience when one of my embryos did not sew. Uh, is this possible? What's the reason? Uh, okay, this is depends of quality of embryo on oocyte. Uh, okay, oocyte is more sensitive. What kind of oocyte we are choosing uh, for the freezing and who is freezing this oocyte or embryo? Actually, there is even with low quality of oocyte, there is not a big question for the survival rate. This is depends of technique, depends of experience of embryologist and uh, freezing with or vitrification media which uh, we are using. But of course, still possibility, there are possibility after the towing embryo or oocyte cannot be survived. Thank you. Uh, we have a question, um, maybe doctor can answer. I have one more question. I'm unmarried and want to try egg donation. Can I? Uh, thank you for your question. Very interesting question. But uh, there is no restriction in Ukraine to do egg donation if uh, you are not married. Some countries not permit 
that, but in Ukraine there is no restriction. Uh, you can choose egg donor and sperm, do uh, sperm donor as well. We have also the possibility to provide you quite big amount of different profiles. And uh, also we have the program of embryo adoption. So we have ready embryos with donors eggs and donors sperm and you can choose ready embryos. It is more easy sometimes and more quickly. So there is no restriction to you. Thank you. And um, I also want to ask the doctor, how do you organize egg donor stimulation and egg retrieval during COVID-19? It seems very important. Yeah, uh, recently uh, European Society of Reproduction and Embryology published a guideline and we are doing our organizing our work with patients and with egg donors according to this guideline. So uh, at the beginning of the treatment, we are doing the check, uh, the control of uh, health of donor. If a donor has some symptoms, we are doing specific tests to COVID-19. If no symptom, we start the stimulation. Also, before the egg retrieval, we repeat this control of health of egg donor. Uh, we are using also some specific uh, protection um, clauses. Uh, all staff of clinic wearing mask and this specific protection clauses all the time. Before it was only in operation room, but now we are working only like that from the reception to the operation room. Uh, also, we try to organize our work to not have a lot of patients at the same time. Uh, and also we try that they stay in clinic with the distance at minimum one point half to meters between the patients. Uh, in each room, only one uh, patient after operation, after surgical intervention or before may be present. So we try to organize like that. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm 36. Uh, tried several IVF, but unsuccessful. I want to try my own stimulation, but afraid there will be uh, not... Um, there will not be any embryos. Can I do my stimulation and egg donation in your clinic? Um, okay, thank you for your question. I am not completely understand, but as I understand the question, if we can do at the same time egg donation and own stimulation. Uh, yes, we have this kind of program. We can try the own stimulation. Uh, and uh, at the same time, patient can choose from our cryobank of egg, do of egg donors um, some number of eggs. And the day of egg collection, we receive own eggs and uh, throwing donors eggs and made fertilization at the same time. And we can see if own eggs and own embryos have good quality, we can use them and freeze donors' embryos, yeah? If just opposite, own embryos will stop uh, their development and, or will be not very good quality or, for example, will be genetically abnormal, we can use uh, donors, uh, embryos from donors' eggs. Mm, like that, we will not lose time for preparation of endometrium and we can do the transfer in any case. Thank you. And we have uh, one more question, uh, maybe last. Uh, what about the length of period that sperm should be frozen that still maintains quality? Maybe to be wrong? Uh, there is the same situation like all sites for the same question. There is no special period. Uh, which we measure can give damage length of uh, cryo storage. So uh, also there are published article, 15 years old, old uh, frozen sperm tort and give high quality of embryos and life tort. So there is no restriction for mm -hmm. length of sperm freezing here as well. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, you have questions, <laughs> okay. Uh, we're all sometimes freezing conditions um, where a different law there we go. Can you read it in the chat, please? Uh, we'll go if we, well, before. Oh, exactly. Also, I couldn't understand, but uh, um, freezing protocol. Oh, okay. So, if we are talking about uh, oocyte, embryo, and sperm, of course, for all of them, we are using only vitrification, fast uh, freezing protocols. Uh, there is, of course, standard protocols for uh everyone for every clinic and country which they are using only that we are cho changing the criteria which we are choosing for freezing and also uh composition of the uh, media and timing for the freezing uh, so we are following according our experience which give best results so we are following that way uh actually I show also Dr. Galina show on the statistics. So we have really high survival rate uh, for the oocyte and embryo following. Uh, that is the one of the uh, script. So of course we are uh, working a selective method. And secondly, uh, we built our own uh, towing and freezing protocol. Yeah. Um... There is uh, maybe some again detailization that uh, the question was about that the embryos were frozen um, quite a long time ago. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. I think okay. it's all. Okay, okay. So if it is, of course, 15 to 20 years ago, that is mostly slow freezing. So now we changed the protocol. Now everyone is using uh, rapid protocol, but still. Uh, kind of uh, media and embryologist experience able to talk even 15 to 20 years old embryos uh, or of course for all sites system will not work such uh, high quality but for embryos there is no risk even with 20 years uh, ago frozen embryos we can talk safety and without questions okay thank you uh... That will be maybe enough for today. Um, uh, we thank you to our speakers. Um, just uh, <laughs> we have some uh, kind words from our uh, visitors. Uh, so if you have another questions, you can send uh, to us uh, to contact ivmed.com.ua. Uh, our specialist will give all answers if you will need. And uh, thank you for your watching us and uh, see you next Friday. Um, again, we will have a piece of interesting topic for you held by Birol about our lab, uh, how it works, how we uh, store the biomaterial, is it safe? Uh, there are safe conditions for storage. Uh, should you worry about how your um, embryos or cells are being stored, or there is no uh, chance or no reasons to be worried? Um, thank you. See you next time. Say, stay safe and healthy. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.